It's May 1997. And what you see is not a screenshot from Beverly Hills 90210 or Melrose Place or any other TV show popular back in the day. This is a photo from my prom night. And these are my two best friends from high school, Nicola and Peja. Yes, we looked like three completely clueless teenagers, and we didn't have any idea about what is going to happen in the next couple of months that is going to change our lives forever. So what happened? Finally, the first internet service provider arrived to Montenegro. So the citizens of Montenegro could officially and legally access the internet. I stress legally because we were doing it in a couple of years previously, but that's a topic for another TEDx talk. And we didn't waste no time. So just in a couple of months, me and my two best friends, we started the first download website in what was then called Yugoslavia. It was doing really good, and we even started promoting it. So we used state-of-the-art web banner advertising techniques, like this one. <laughs> so I can bet that in the history of web banners, no one has managed to put more fonts on a single banner <laughs> than we did back in 1997. So very soon, we figured out that we could use the same skill set to build our website, to offer the service to our clients, to build websites for other companies. So yes, we started making websites across Montenegro for different companies from different industries. And the business was booming. As you can see in the next photo, these are not three clueless teenagers anymore. These are now three internet entrepreneurs. Still completely clueless, but the title is much better than we did. Our only concern at the time was when is HBO finally going to acquire the movie rights for the movie or a series about our entrepreneurial endeavor. The only bad thing was that Netflix was not around at the time because it would have been an epic battle between HBO and Netflix over the movie rights. However, we've hit the wall. There was no room for growth anymore. We didn't have any new products. We didn't have any new clients. We've basically sucked Montenegro dry when it comes up to digital website building. So what was the idea? Well, the idea was pretty much obvious. We need to step up our game. We need to get out of Montenegro. And we need to find new clients. So the first step was figuring out who to call. And for me, it was rather easy. It was a question of at what activity do I spend the most time in my life? And the answer was very easy. Watching basketball games of my favorite basketball club, Partizan Belgrade. So what's the obvious thing now? The obvious thing would be to contact the club and try to do a website for them. But I needed advice. I needed advice on how to do it. So I needed to call someone. And who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's always good to know that you're not the only nerd in the house. So thank you, my fellow geeks. Yes, I was about to call the Ghostbusters. But then I said, look, there's one person in my life who is full of optimism. One person who is the source of energy. Energy, positive energy that cannot be depleted. And that person is my brother, Nicola. Uh, for those of you who know my brother, you already know where this story is going. So I tried to explain to Nicola what my challenge was. And I asked his advice. And he was obviously not impressed. So I asked him, OK, please, try to focus on this one. Empathize with what I'm trying to do. So I want to call someone in the club and offer them my, our services. So try and empathize. Try to walk in their shoes. Try to view the situation from their own viewpoint. OK, so now, if you were them and I called you, what would you do if you were them? If I was them, I would immediately hang up the phone. 
So that's the full positivity of my brother. However, despite all of that, I still decided to make the call. I call called the club, I introduced myself, I said, hi, my name is Vanya, I'm calling from Montenegro. We have this thing called Digitalizume, we build websites, and we would love to build a website for you. Could you please put me in touch with your webmaster? Our web who? Your webmaster. I'm sorry, we have a director, but there are no masters in here. And that was the point that I figured out it's not going to be easy. So I asked, okay, is there someone from the internet that's in here? Is there someone from the media? Oh, as soon as you mentioned media, yes, there's a person in charge of media relations. Okay, could you please get me in touch with him? So I was going back and forth with a person explaining who am I, why on earth am I cold calling him, what, how come I know that they need a new website? How come I know that their website, current website is not good? Why am I offering all of this? And to cut the long story short, he said yes. So we finally made the website, and what's even better was that at some point in time, there was a change in management. So there was a whole new structure and whole new structure of people in management coming in. But they liked the site so much that they agreed to stick to it and use it. So when all of this was ended, I asked the media guy, okay, I need you to answer me one thing honestly. So why on earth did you agree to accept our offer? And he said, look, it's because you guys dared. However, at the point of time, I wasn't sure if there was something seriously wrong with you, or if you're really building something great and I wanted to be a part of it. So fortunately, he tried his luck with us and we made it happen. Now, let's fast forward 12 years. As you can see, it's my dear friends, Peja and Natasha, and they invited me for a chat. They said, we're launching this thing called SparkMe. It's going to be a digital conference based in Montenegro. It's a part of the corporate social responsibility program of .me, and we only have four things to tell you. Number one is we want you to be the program director. Okay, so far so good. Number two, your total speaker fee budget is exactly zero euros. Okay, this is going to be a challenge. Number three, your total marketing budget for the conference is exactly zero euros. Okay, this spells trouble. And finally, we want you to make it great. <laughs> and I was toast at the moment. How on earth these two people put so much trust in me without any guidance and expecting me and the team to do it is beyond me. But I'm still to this day thankful for their trust. So I was facing a challenge. I was facing a big challenge. And I needed an answer how to react. So I'm gonna need some help from you to tell me how would you react to this. So I'll try and pull a Jedi mind trick on you. Okay, so you see a lot of squares, a lot of rectangles here. So the question is, when faced with a challenge, what would you do? But do not tell me or tell anyone around you what is it that you would do. Just pick one that you would actually do. Okay, did everyone pick one? Okay, we need fast thinkers here. Okay, now you can move. You can move vertically until you reach the first white field. Stop at the first white field. But do not tell me or anyone what field is it. So move vertically from your original field and stop at the first white field. Now move horizontally and stop at the first yellow field. 
Now move diagonally and stop at the first white field. And finally, move vertically and stop at the first yellow field. So now, I'm going to say, when faced with a challenge, what are you going to do? And you're all going to scream. Oh, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> when I do it, where you are. So, when you're faced with a challenge, what are you going to do? Thank you. Think and act creatively. The only thing left for me was to think and act creatively. So how to do it? Well, usually people first decide what to do and then they pick the team. That's the wrong approach. You first need to decide on who and then decide on what. So you first pick the team and then together with the team decide on what are you going to achieve. So as Jim Collins say, get the right people on the bus and get the right people in the right seats. So now you need to pick a team. You can have a good team. You can have a great team. But you can have an awesome team. And this is the awesome team behind Spark Me Conference. And thank you, awesome team of Spark Me Conference. So this is the team that spends 10 months out of in a each year to make Spark Me magic happen. So then we needed to decide between of us what are we going to do? And the decision was make the best conference in this part of the world. And in order to have the best conference, you needed to have the best speakers in the world. So there are many stories about many different speakers and how they ended up in Montenegro. But one of our favorite speakers is the best-selling author Brian Solis. And his story started way back in 2013. I was in the States at the conference. I figured out that the Brian will be speaking. So I waited, 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 and finally got my moment to introduce myself and introduce Spark. Please, disregard my hair. This is arguably the worst hairdo I had in history. So then next year comes. Brian is still not in Montenegro. So what do we do? Sanya is in the US, and she's at the conference, and Brian is speaking. So she's waiting until the perfect moment to catch Brian and pitch Spark Me an invitation to come to Montenegro. So finally, three years after we started pitching Brian, Brian finally arrived to Montenegro, and he did an opening, a brilliant opening keynote at Spark Me. It was so good that at one point in time, he said, oh, one thing I really love is champagne. And a member of the team stood up, went to the bar, took a glass of champagne, brought it to the stage, and Brian toasted it on, toasted on the stage. But you would think that this is where the story ends. However, we like to think of our speakers as members of the family, which means you take care of your family, which means even though Brian was already in Montenegro. He can't go to a single conference without us greeting him. So next year in Texas, the whole team was there and they waited for Brian to meet him. And as you can see, the poor guy's body language, come on, please, I was already there, just leave me alone. <laughs> so finally this year, we had this great guy called Sam Conniff and once the conference was over, I asked Sam, okay, Sam, Everything is over now. Can you please tell me why, one thing, why on earth did you accept our invitation to come to Montenegro? And he said, because you actually dare to invite me. So at the point of time, I was thinking, either there's something seriously wrong with these people, or they are doing actually great things. So I took my chance and yes, it figured out that you guys are actually doing something great here. So I'll conclude my talk with a pearl of wisdom my dear friend and my professor, J.B. Kasarjian, gave to me when he said, at one point in your life, you need to start something. You need to start something that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. 
It can be a business, it can be a nonprofit, it can be a magazine, it can be a club, it can be a local TEDx event, but start something that wouldn't be there if you hadn't started it. So I'll leave you with a final piece of advice. Aim high. Dare to create something. And don't be afraid to be great. Thank you.